Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's October 30th and it is Halloween weekend. We are very excited about the great weather as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. That's right. A lot of people love watching horror films or just about anything that scares the bejesus out of them. And there's a new study out about that. Why do we like to be so scared? There is a fine line. That's true. So according to researchers, they say it's a uh, fine line and that by investigating how humans derive pleasure from fear, we find that there seems to be a sweet spot where enjoyment is maximized. Mm -hmm. This is new research from a uh, university in Denmark. What they said, our study provides some of the first empirical evidence of the relationship between fear, enjoyment, and physical arousal in recreational forms of fear, like going to horror movies. Study authors say it's long been suspected that a type of effect plays a role in why people find horror movies in haunted houses so appealing. This arousal would include a quickening pulse and a release of hormones in the frightened person's brain. So that's how they, this is how they found it all out. They said that his team examined 110 volunteers as they walked through a haunted house in Denmark, okay? And researchers fitted each person with a heart rate monitored record real-time data as they explored the Halloween attraction. So the team finds recreational fear plays a big role in why a little scare can be a fun thing. They say recreational fear is the mixed emotional experience of feeling fear and enjoyment simultaneously. Usually fear is an unpleasant feeling that has evolved to protect humans from harmful situations. Now the results reveal a U-shaped curve in terms of fear and enjoyment among the participants between heart reactions mm -hmm. and a person's own feelings and observations. Yeah, so that whole Goldilocks thing they say, it seems to be the case that it's gotta be just the right amount of fear is central for maximizing our enjoyment. So we don't want to be be like, well, that wasn't scary, or then like that's too scary. Or please take me to the ER. It's got to be somewhere <laughs> in the middle. Yeah. How about some nice, fun fear this Halloween? Yeah. Sure. We'll take that. All right. For now, let's look at today's nine at nine. The U.S. has once again broken a grim record. 87,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported yesterday. That's the highest amount of new cases in a single day since the pandemic began. The 17-year-old facing homicide charges for killing two people during civil unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, is expected to have an extradition hearing today. Kyle Rittenhouse's defense team is trying to stop his extradition from Illinois to Wisconsin. Philadelphia City Council has passed a bill banning police use of tear gas, rubber bullets, and pepper spray during protests. It comes as new protests filled the city following the police shooting death of Walter Wallace Jr. After making landfall in southeast Louisiana Wednesday night as a strong Category 2 hurricane, Zeta tore a path from the Gulf to the Atlantic. At least six people were killed and more than two million were left without power. It's the last weekend before the election and President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are once again crossing paths on the campaign trail. They were both in Florida yesterday and their paths will overlap again today as they campaign in Wisconsin and Minnesota. More people in Bear County have voted in the 2020 presidential election so far than in all of the 2016 election. As of yesterday, more than 600,000 people had cast their ballots compared to 598,000 in 2016. It is the last day of early voting in Texas. In Bear County, polls will be open through 10 p.m. Check out a list of the slowest and busiest polling sites on our website at ksat.com. Don't forget daylight saving times in Sunday as clocks fall back one hour. The official time change happens at 2 a.m. The Mandalorian is back. Season two of the hit Disney Plus Star Wars series debuts today, and that is today's nine at nine. Yay, the Mandalorian. So we're not watching scary stuff. We're watching yeah. the Mandalorian. Yeah, the baby Yoda. How cute is that? Mm -hmm. We won't be scared. scared. Not yeah. at all. Let's see how the forecast is looking. We've heard good things all week about Halloween for South Texas. How are we looking, Justin? Yeah. I think it's about as good as it gets for Halloween, honestly. We got uh, cool weather yes. right in time for trick-or-treating and then some nice weather in the afternoon. It's all good. The weekend looks absolutely beautiful. Today's going to be absolutely beautiful. We got the time change this week and full moon. It's all there. Uh, temperatures right now on the chilly side, 51 degrees at the airport, 46 burning stage, 38 com uh, comfort, 38 in Kerrville, 47 in Tarpley. And the forecast for today, 
Takes us up to about 72. That sun sets at 649. Obviously, uh, it's going to change once we head into daylight saving time. We're falling back an hour. Well, we're going to talk more about that. We'll talk more about the Halloween forecast, too. We've got a couple of this day and weather histories to talk about as well. Busy forecast. We've got it for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And right now we've got a big incident out there, 410 and Cherry Ridge. This appears to be in the westbound lanes. Looks like they got one lane and the shoulder completely blocked off with fire, EMS and police on the scene. But traffic is running through that area, just slowing as you approach that accident. Again, westbound 410 near Cherry Ridge. And top stories we are following today. We're still waiting for more information on a shooting and standoff in West Bear County that happened overnight. Bear County Sheriff's Office expected to hold a press conference sometime after 930 this morning. All started around 730 last night in the 12,600 block of Lexi Petal near the summit at the Alamo Ranch subdivision. Deputies tell us there was an argument between a couple that ended with the man shooting the woman. At last check, the woman was in the hospital in critical condition. Bear County Sheriff officials say the standoff began when the shooter barricaded himself inside the home and ended around midnight when deputies found him dead. Our Katrina Weber will be at a press conference and will bring us the update on the news at noon. Well, San Antonio police searching for several men who they say tried and failed to break into an ATM on the city's north side. The attempted robbery happened around 430 this morning at a Chase Bank in the 12,500 block of Northwest Military, not far from Wurzbach Parkway. Police tell us the men broke into the outer shell of the machine but were unable to get any of the cash. Officers say some witnesses called in the robbery from a nearby Starbucks and that may have spooked the suspects who left the scene. Investigators now waiting to review surveillance video to get a better description of those suspects. Police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect wanted for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. It happened last Sunday, October 25th near downtown. Officers say a man punched a woman staying at a home in the 900 block of East Houston Street then shot her. Police tell us the suspect then drove away in a dark four-door vehicle. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You may be eligible for a cash reward. With COVID-19 cases on the rise, the city of San Antonio expanding free testing to coronavirus hotspots around town. The city is adding five walk-up testing locations with two on the south side, two on the west side, and another just northwest of downtown. So here's a closer look at those locations. The testing site at the Edgewood Square Shopping Center on General McMullen will be open through November 5th. The South Park Plaza testing site and West Avenue location are now open. The Our Lady of the Lake University location set to open today, and the Daughters of Charity location will open up coming up on November 11th. In your morning headlines, a train derails in southeast Texas and an elementary school is evacuated. Plus, an odd robbery and a flying car. David Sears has them all on a busy Friday morning. Good morning. Been waiting for this flying car thing for years. Now. Have you? About time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we saw the Jetsons. Yeah, we were promised yeah. flying stuff. A long time ago. So we'll show you what it looks like here in just a second. But first, you are looking at a deadly plane crash just outside of Las Vegas. Two people were on board that plane. Both were killed. The plane took off from the North Las Vegas airport at 929, crashed nine minutes later. It was a twin engine 1974 Cessna 310. Several witnesses saw the plane flying low. One said he could hear the engine sputter. He lost it from sight and then heard a loud bang. It hit a cinder block wall at a construction site near the construction trailer. A person inside that trailer said he heard the crash, rushed to help, but the plane burst into flames and there was nothing he could do. The NTSB is investigating. Now this is some rare video. You are watching a freight train derail in Orange County. I have it for you just a sec. Just east of Beaumont, the rail cars ended up in a pile. Some of the road, 25 cars were involved. Five tank cars suffered some damage and leaked. Four of those cars were carrying a petroleum product. The other car was transporting a corrosive product. There were evacuations ordered within a mile to a mile and a half radius. That included homes and an elementary school. The elementary school kids went over to the high school. You are looking at uh, some ground footage. I don't think we have the ground footage, but that uh, is from a drone from the sheriff's office. You can see that pile of mess right there. All right, this is a good one. So you're looking at a woman entering a Spectrum Cable Company store in Florida. Here she comes. She's going to walk over to this station right there. The employees kind of look at her. She's got a crowbar. She's going to cry, op <laughs> cry open the drawer. She's after money. 
There was nothing at that station, so the employee just kind of looks at her, like, what are you doing? She walks over to the other station and starts to pry that one open. The employee and a customer kind of might move away, and then she gets it open and then just takes out $500. She heads for the door, an employee got her license plate number, police actually waiting for her when she got home. This is the third time she'd been in that store that day. Her name is Diana Serrati. The first two times she was in the store, she demanded a refund for $103 for a service that she no longer used. She was told they didn't give cash refunds at the store. She was going to have to fill out some paperwork. Well, that just got her a little more upset. So she came back the third time to collect on her own. She was yelling when she walked in the door, where's my money? And I'm going to get it one way or the other. Well, she got it all right. She's now currently taking advantage of the jailhouse cable setup since she was arrested and charged with robbery and criminal mischief. All right, this is a crane. You can barely see it, but this is a crane and it's just spinning around. It's way up in the air in the skies of New York City. It's attached to the side of a building and apparently that is what it's supposed to do in high winds. That's according to city building authorities. It's perfectly normal, but if you look on the ground, there's a bunch of degree, debris on the street. They're not 100% sure, but pretty sure it came from the crane or something the crane knocked into. Still dangerous. At least this is one time it was good that there wasn't a lot of people on the street. However, some roads were closed. Even a subway was rerouted. By the way, in case you were wondering, that building that that crane was connected to is in Midtown Manhattan near Central Park. It's an apartment building, and the units run from $8 million to $66 million. And finally, maybe this is a little cheaper, a transportation vehicle we've all been waiting for. It's the flying car. This is taking place in Europe. The hybrid can go from a road vehicle to a plane in just three minutes. All you got to do is click a button. You can get it in a two or four seater and it will be on sale in about six months. I see the looks on their faces when you pull up to wash tub. Yeah. <laughs> Take the manager special for and don't forget the wings. You could actually be sitting at a traffic light mm -hmm. and decide during the time you're sitting right? in the like, you know what, I'm just going to fly on. I'm out of here. <laughs> Imagine so that the FAA now is going to have. It needs to turn into a boat as well, and it can be like a full-on Batman vehicle. Yeah. That's a whole weekend in one. There you mm -hmm. go. Thank you, David. All right. Fly right. on. 910, 51 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. It's a case that rocked San Antonio. The execution-style shooting of San Antonio police detective Benjamin Marconi. And now streaming on the Case at TV app is a special that looks at the backstory of the case as jury selection for the accused murderer begins. We hear from the producer behind that special later in the newscast. Have you heard about the school spotted all across town? Well, no need to worry. We're not talking about anything spooky. We're talking about these larger than life schools like the one behind me painted by local artists. Their meaning and where you can snap a picture just ahead here on JMSA at 9. And right now, let's check the Dow, and it's down again after a horrible week on Wall Street. Right now, it's down 125 points at 26, 522. And welcome back, it's 914. And during the past week, several skulls have been spotted around the city, including areas like downtown and the airport. We're talking about the Calavetta collection that forms part of the official Day of the Dead celebrations. Alicia Beretta spoke to one of the participating local artists about how traditional and modern art come together in this exhibit. Spotted, Calaveras at the Pearl, another one at Hemisphere, and across from San Fernando Cathedral at Main Plaza, another one that celebrates life and death. It's about the duality of, of life and death. On the back of it, there's Miklan Tecutli, who is the Aztec god of the underworld. And there are the bones of the dead kind of rising up and crossing over into the land of the living on the, on the front side of it. I put some flowers on here. Enrique Martinez is one of 18 artists, part of the Day of the Dead Calavera exhibit. His journey to create El Paso, which means the passing, began about five weeks ago. Time team seems to slow down when you're painting, you know, especially doing those detailed, repetitive kind of details. For Martinez, and some of the other local artists, the three-dimensional project allowed for education on a tradition that has recently received more attention. I think for me it's just been about becoming more comfortable with the idea of death and understanding that, that, that death is um, intertwined with life. The Calaveras can be found in 14 different locations across the city. Some venues, like the Pearl, feature three schools, including one covered in cempasuchil or marigolds, also known as the Flower of the Dead, 
painted by Eva Marengo Sanchez. And around the corner is artist Gabriel Garcia's take Future in Cacti. And I think your instinct is to approach it face on, look at it from the front, but definitely walk around it and, and take it all in and take it all in as a whole, you know, even the top part of it, um, the underside of it. And while at Hemisphere, Take a close look at this mosaic piece titled De las Estrellas Hasta la Tierra, which translates to From the Stars to the Earth, which according to the artist Gerardo Garcia, references to the human life cycle. So you can head over to ksat.com for a full list of the routes. We have that link as well as a brief description of each of these calaveras. And this is the third, the one behind me is the third one at the Pearl. So if you come here, you can knock out three and it's painted by the mural duel Los Otros. That's Czech Vega and Nick Soup. And this is the one that you definitely want to keep an eye on during tonight's broadcast of the River Parade of the Dia de los Muertos River Parade that's happening today, 8 p.m. on KSAT 12. Mark, Stephanie. And Alicia, these are beautiful. So what's the plan for the schools once the celebration has ended? Great question. Well, they'll be on display until November 9th. And for collectors, lovers of art, good news because these are for sale and those proceeds will benefit, will go directly back to the artist to cover the creation of them as well as all the time and transportation it took to get them here. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, Alicia over at the Pearl. Thanks, Alicia. Have a good weekend. Happy Halloween. Justin thank is you. here. Happy Halloween to you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And Justin is here now with our Junior Meteorologist for this Friday. Yeah, I'm kind of sad, guys. This is our last Junior Meteorologist, Aww. at least for a little while. We're going to put a hold on it. But we got so many good submissions in. We want to thank everybody who sent in yes. videos. All the kiddos did a terrific job. And we're going to end it with Carson and Paisley. They've got questions. We've got answers. Take a listen. Does my nose is the Paisley. Hey Paisley, is it hot today? Yes, but why is it so cold too? Um, hey Justin, what time we went to to school? Sort your pants. I'm so confused. <laughs> He's not Wait. the other one. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> and and does that happen to you when you wear those cool t-shirts? And if so, where do I get one? <laughs> exactly. Those are awesome. Hey, listen, it is a common question. It's been so wild lately back and forth. Yes. So you can, you know, wear the, the pants, long sleeve shirts in the morning and then T-shirts and mm -hmm. maybe shorts in the mm -hmm. afternoon. It'll be that warm. We're all about the layering these days. <laughs> it's oh, all, definitely. It's all about the layering. Great question, guys. We appreciate it. And again, we enjoyed all the junior meteorologists that we've had so far this year. Thanks, kids. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's talk a little bit about history. It was on this day, guys. Back in 2015, that we got an EF2 tornado in Floresville. You may remember this. It damaged the high school. They actually had to put school on hold for a couple of days. Uh, did quite a bit of damage there in Floresville. It's also the date in which San Antonio saw its earliest freeze. We got down to 32 degrees in 1917 on this date. We're not in jeopardy of getting down to freezing uh, anywhere in the seven day forecast coming up, but uh, some interesting stuff there. Let's take a look at the precipitation for the month of October and look back a little bit. It's been a dry month. I, I know there's several days here where we did record some rain, but look at the numbers. Three hundredths of an inch, five hundredths of an inch, three hundredths of an inch. It just didn't add up to much. So the total for the month, and we're going to go ahead and count the 31st because we're not expecting rain tomorrow. Twenty three hundredths of an inch. That's it. Uh, over three and a half inches below average for the year. It's not great. We're way behind, so we could use some rainfall. Again, there's just not much in the forecast. 51 degrees right now. Northerly winds at about eight miles per hour. It's a pretty nice morning. Temperatures are going to warm up quickly today. 50 Bernie stage, 42 Comfort, 47 in Bandera, 46 Hondo, 51 down there at Stinson. 52 Carrizo Springs, 49 Del Rio, 48 Rock Springs. And uh, looking at the dew points, they're low. The air is very dry. It'll be dry through the weekend. And in fact, we're going to get a shot of some drier air on Sunday into Monday, so the dew points will fall off again. It's really not until we get into late next week that the dew points start to climb. We start to feel a little bit of the humidity. Yeah, there's a weak front on Sunday, but basically all it does is just draw in some drier air. It doesn't really cool us down all that much. Here's the setup. We've got high clouds coming in from the southwest, and that really is about it. You'll notice a few thin high cirrus clouds Saturday and Sunday, and maybe even into Monday. And the rest of the country, Boy, this is quiet. We've got a little bit of what's left over from Zeta, some snow up there across parts of New England. But other than that, it's really quiet. It's going to be a very quiet Halloween. Let's get you the forecast for Halloween. This is our socially distanced 
graphic. Oh, how many here? See how that works? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're with the times here. As you see the little uh, tombstone there in the back here, lies 2020, it stunk. <laughs> Agree with that. I like that you guys, you put it in the past tense. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. yes. almost there. Uh, 69 degrees around 7 o'clock, 63, 9 o'clock. Really good trick-or-treating weather. And uh, don't forget, daylight saving time ends Saturday. The sunrise will be at 746 on Sunday. It'll be at 647. And then the sunset on Saturday, 648. The sunset will be at 547. Forecast for the rest of today, up around 72 for a high. Sunny skies, light and variable winds. Uh, really a pretty nice day and the extended forecast will go uh, 77 Saturday, 76 Sunday and looking good next week for elections. Maybe a bit more cloud cover as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. All we're missing is the beard for Monday That's for the yes. beginning of No Shave no November. Shade. That's right. Starts on Monday. Mm -hmm. Be aware of that. It's not a leftover Halloween costume. <laughs> right. right. As far as we know. 922, 51 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. We are counting down the hours until the virtual 2020 Day of the Dead River Parade. We're going to go behind the scenes next. The countdown is officially on. In less than 12 hours, we here at KSAT will be presenting the 2020 Day of the Dead River Parade. And due to the pandemic, the festivities have gone virtual this year. Our EC's Romero takes us behind the scenes of this year's parade for a preview of some of the beautiful barges you're going to see tonight. <laughs> with lights, colors, and art. The barges of the 2020 Day of the Dead River Parade were created in Mexico at the skilled hands of Mexican artists and designers. Estos son los pisos de la barca de las calaveras de azúcar. Y bueno, aquí tenemos todo esta parte de el alebrije, bueno, la barca de los alebrijes. The parade preparations began months ago. From the muñecas to the calaveras, each piece was carefully crafted, then hand-painted, before being brought to the U.S. The attention to detail making these displays an impressive sight to behold. Tiene 50 centímetros de altura por 1.50 de largo. Once the barges arrived in San Antonio, then began the task of holding a parade in the shadows of the night. No crowds allowed, lots of social distancing, and of course, face masks for those helping to bring the parade to life. A beautiful display of culture and tradition as San Antonio celebrates Day of the Dead. Isis Romero, KSAT 12 News. So our parade is tonight at 8 o'clock here on KSAT. Coming up in about 15 minutes, ECS Romero and RJ Marquez join us live in studio to debrief their trip to Mexico and all the stories that came out of that. Looking forward to that. Time now is 927 and 51 degrees. To Mark Diaz de los Muertos, many families make altars to honor our loved ones who have passed. We'll take a look at a mini altar that uh, that um, Rooney put together. Yeah, that's, Stephanie's daughter. That's my little girl. Mm -hmm. And one of our KSET streaming producers put together a piece on the backstory of the case of the man accused of killing an SAPD detective. Uh, Melissa Medina joins us live to tell us what went into the making of the special next. And hey, welcome back. It's 930. It's a case that rocked San Antonio, the execution style shooting of SAPD detective Benjamin Marconi. Otis McCain is facing a capital murder charge in this case with jury selection underway. The backstory looks back at our case hat coverage of that story. And here's a preview. It's the ultimate sanction when the state of Texas seeks to put someone to death. Otis McCain Jr. is a step closer to going to trial. The district attorney will seek the death penalty. Otis Tyrone McCain. Otis McCain. The man accused of killing San Antonio police detective Benjamin Marconi. The police are saying you confessed to this. The motive for the capital murder is still unknown. I'm just trying to get at what your side of the story is. If, if anybody in this area know who Otis McCain is, you know I don't have this in my bones. And right now, our streaming producer, Alyssa Medina, joins us now to talk more about this case. Now, we're coming on four years, the anniversary of the shooting. Why has it taken so long for this case to go to trial? 
So that's actually something that we explore in this piece. But obviously, the coronavirus had a big impact on this. This was one of three cases, big, high-profile cases that were expected in the courtroom this year. But the Janine Jones killer nurse case and the medical center rapist case, those two actually got resolved before the pandemic hit. But the McCain case was actually in the middle of jury selection when the courtroom shut down. And so we are finally picking up where we left off there. But also, of course, this is a death penalty case, and those take a lot of time because, after all, someone's life is at stake. And so in this piece, we take a look at what goes into that process. Now, Paul Venema talked about that before the pandemic even started this year. Uh, Alyssa, I'm glad you're with us. What else can viewers find in this story that they wouldn't necessarily see in one of our traditional newscasts? Yes, so... This piece actually uses our case at coverage to tell this story and it works to kind of take the viewer back to that moment in time. But also it also features a lot of unseen footage and extended interviews that maybe didn't make it to air. For example, uh, Katrina Weber, she conducted a jailhouse interview with McCain a few days after his arrest. And we saw snippets of that throughout the, the newscast, but this version of it, I think, does a great job at showing who McCain is and maybe what was going through his mind when all of this was going down. It also features never before seen footage from a few pretrial hearings, as well as extended interviews with lawyers and uh, attorneys that are well versed and experienced in death penalty cases. And a lot of people are curious about this since, you know, it's been some time now. Where does the case stand at this point? So, like I said, we're finally picking back up where we left off. So jury selection actually just resumed on Monday. So this is a, a lot different process of jury selection than normal cases. So this piece will give us a look at the differences between jury selection in death penalty cases and in normal cases. But this piece also helps to give the viewer some background on this case so that way when we do start covering this case extensively when when it goes to trial they'll be well informed on it all right producer Alyssa medina thanks for coming in and give the backstory streaming now on the case at tv app download it today on your apple tv roku amazon fire stick and much more Alyssa, thank you thank you yes thank you and taking a look outside with live cam this morning it is 51 degrees but it's nice the sun's out yeah, the sun's out and those temperatures will race upwards. We'll be in the 70s by the time the day is over with. Uh, let's take a look outside right now. 51 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour dew point is down to 37. So the air is pretty dry. It's going to stay dry over the weekend too. Here's a look at the weekend forecast complete with our Halloween mummy. 77 on Saturday, 76 on Sunday. You get the dance in. Where did, yeah. Where did we get the render of you? <laughs> uh, come on, he looks exactly uh, tall, moves. lanky guy. <laughs> good moves, yeah. Yeah, no, no, not good moves. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you do. We, we Just dance as a with star. the mummy before. I, we try, we try. But, Grant, uh, dance with the mummy that brung you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween looks good nonetheless. Uh, temperatures right now, again, in the low 50s here in San Antonio, 40s at right now, 48 degrees here, 53 New Braunfels, 41. Kerrville and 44 comfort forecast for today will be up around 72 light and variable wind sunset is at 649 and some changes, maybe a few changes next week. We'll detail some of those coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Our director Jamie told me that that incident uh, westbound lanes of 410 at Cherry Ridge is all cleared up and that is the case looking live at Trans Guide. 935 Dia de los Muertos commemorates those who have passed away and some celebrate by making altars. So my daughter Rooney was assigned a project for school to make a Dia de los Muertos altar and she chose to honor my dad. Take a look. Hey, it's Rooney here. Today we're doing a Dia de los Muertos altar. Don't forget to make an altar because Dia de los Muertos is coming up soon. Here's all your options. Here's a sample. You can make big altars, small altars, medium altars. I make mine look like this. Let's start doing this. First, we need this kind of plate. -Doh. Just get a tiny little piece, super tiny as you can. Just make your loved ones. I'm just giving you an example. Ta-da! I thought that was super adorable and cute. You can put stuff inside there. 
It's a candy corn. That's what he liked it. And I bet Papa loved a lot of stuff. And if you don't know who Papa is, let me tell you. It's my grandpa. Here he is right there. My papa was a military man and he served in the war. And right now, I made an altar of my loved one. Pan muerto, bread, and you don't need to use wa like real water. You can just make it. It's important because they might be happy, like not just happy, super happy. And they might think about you every day. Don't never forget about your loved one. Your loved one loves you and they never forget you. Just like them, never forget your loved ones. You've said it before and I'll say it again, your daughter's absolutely precious. Thank you, Mark. You and your husband, uh, your <laughs> husband and Rooney put this together. What did you think when you f saw the finished product? <laughs> I started crying. I bet, yeah. Yeah, I am. Uh, so he, he interviewed Rooney when I, when I left and that's not how it's been working out. Um, I'm uh, not in the room and so when I, I saw the raw interview and I was already, you know, starting and then I, mm -hmm. you know, then I saw the edited version and I, you know, started crying as well. It's, Did uh, you know she was going to make one for your dad? That I knew, okay. that I knew, because uh, we, you know, so for people who don't know, my, my dad actually passed away six months before Rooney was born. Mm -hmm. So she never met my dad, but I'm right. guessing because we talk about him so much and we mm -hmm. visit him at the cemetery at Fort Sam. I mean, when she talks about my dad, it's, it's like they're old buds, <laughs> you know, like they've known that each they, other for that years. That they never met. That they never met, yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you. It was uh, nice to share that and I'm glad that she, she made that project. Well, thank, thank Louise and Rooney for sharing. I will. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> right now we're at 938, 51 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And over the past month, we have shown you a lot of stories surrounding the celebration of the Day of the Dead. All the stories came from a trip that our EC Through Metal and RJ Marcus took to Mexico. They're going to join us live to tell us more about that trip and what they learned next. Welcome back, 942. We have been talking about it all month long, and the big day is finally here. Due to the pandemic, the Day of the Dead River Parade has gone virtual this year, and the celebrations can be seen right here on KSET 12 beginning tonight at 8 p.m. Joining us now in the studio live to talk more about the parade and some of the stories leading up to it are our colleagues E.C. Romero and R.J. Marquez. Hi, hey, guys. guys. Hi, good to see you. Well, good to have you both here this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Before we talk about the parade, we understand both of you were part of a team from KSAT that went to Mexico. When and why did you go? Tell us a little bit more about the trip. Oof. Well, we went in uh, so the third week of February. So this was before really the world got turned upside down with the pandemic. Yeah. We were very fortunate to uh, to be able to go on this trip. And part of the reason we went is just because of some of the specific sites that we wanted to go to. So it was really just um, it was really just great timing on our part, and I thought that we were able to do everything that we needed to do, visit Guanajuato, uh, visit uh, the Monarch Butterfly Reserve, obviously a panaderia right there. So a lot of cool stuff that we were able to do on this trip before everything kind of got turned. Yeah, and out. the Monarch Butterflies were kind of the center point of our mm -hmm. trip, and the Monarchs are active now up until the end of February, beginning of March. So it was kind of a timing issue. You know, if we, w if we would have waited till March, it would have been too late. Yeah. And so, um, so that's why we chose February. In hindsight, it was a great idea because we were able to get in and out before the uh, pandemic. Yeah, really you guys couldn't have cold. timed yeah. any better. <laughs> yeah. <Absolutely. laughs> and then, you know, we've been watching a lot of the video. It looks beautiful. So what can viewers expect to see tonight during the parade? Oh my goodness. So the parade <laughs> is going to be absolutely magnific magnificent. There's 20 barges, um, as we told you in that story right before this block. They were all handcrafted, built, painted, created in Mexico, and then brought here across the border into San Antonio, and then put on in the shadows of the night. This parade took place a couple of weeks ago down at the Arneson River Theater, and no one was there. I, Steve and I, who are hosting the parade, we weren't even allowed to go and see it in person, and so um, it's going to be a really special event. Um, um, it, it, there's a, just a labor of love behind bringing this to the San Antonio public. Yeah, and for the people that 
were present for last year's parade. I mean, that's obviously a shame that they're not going to be able to be at the Riverwalk, but this celebration is truly amazing. I mean, just the, the amount of detail yes. for these barges is unbelievable. I think it represents the uh, Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead, perfectly, and I think people are really going to be astounded by what they see tonight. Yeah, it, they really right. did seem to take it to a kind of a next level this year. Go back to the trip for a second, he sees an RJ. Did this trip to Mexico hold any particular uh, particularly special meaning to you personally? Absolutely. I think, as EC's mentioned earlier, the uh, trip to the Monarch Butterfly Reserve, I thought was was one of the most amazing things that I had ever seen in my life because as we were talking to people up there, they described it as one of these, like the eighth wonder of the yeah. world. I mean, this is a natural phenomenon that occurs there and we were able to be sort of at the center of where it happens. Uh, Guanajuato was amazing too, especially when you see movies like Coco that really kind of tell a story of Day of the Dead here in the United States. I thought those were two amazing places yeah, to visit. Yeah, speaking of the Monarch Butterfly Reserve, when the, the butterflies would fly around, I felt like a Disney princess. Us, you know, with the butterflies just kind of surrounding you. Um, but no, it, it was truly special. You know, all three of us who went, Misael Gomez was also um, a big part of our team. All of us are of Mexican heritage. And so it's important for us, I think, to for me personally, to feel connected to our culture in that way and be able to um, contextualize the meaning of Dia de Muertos uh, for the San Antonio and American mm -hmm. public. Uh, I think just as journalists, that was just a really important assignment for all of us. And so um, I know I feel more connected to my culture. I have a greater understanding of what this tradition is about mm -hmm. um, and a greater appreciation for you know the people of Mexico. I, I love that country. It's the second time that we've had yep. the opportunity to go <laughs> in, in a year. Right <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, and so yeah. It, it just all around was, an, an amazing experience. Right. RJ, did you feel like a Disney princess too? Uh, <laughs> you know what, Mark? <laughs> I, yeah, a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. A little bit. After okay. seeing okay. the butterflies just fly around you, it's it magical. Was a it really yeah, is. Yeah. It was magical. <laughs> well, you know, going to this parade, we want to reiterate that it's virtual, not yes. live. So tell us what happened behind the scenes to make it happen during a pandemic. Yeah, it was really difficult. You know, as we mentioned, there are no crowds allowed, and so we again want to reiterate: if anybody goes down there tonight, it's it's already happened. It's already taped. You can only watch it on a screen through uh, the case at TV app on 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 air at eight o'clock. Um, but so much work went into this uh, planning started months ago. And, um, you know, as we're looking at this video of just seeing some of the craftsmanship and the artisans at work, um, a tremendous amount of work to, to really pull this off. And, and of course, working with the city to allow this to happen. Well, guys, we're out of time, but thanks so much for both of you coming in and sharing some of your labor of love. And yes. we get to share this slice of San Antonio with the rest of the country yes. and the world starting tonight. Yes, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, several is going to be on 75 different stations. It's going to be seen across the country. So uh, this is going to be a, a, it, an amazing virtual parade to see, to witness. And if you want to also take part in it, remember, use the hashtag DODSA and also at KSAT News. So yeah, yeah it'll highlight really San Antonio in a huge way. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Thank awesome. you so much, thank RJ you. and EC. We appreciate your hard work because you get to bring those stories to us. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank Thanks, you, guys. guys. All right, back over to Justin now, looking ahead for the rest of the Halloween weekend forecast. Uh, the skies could not be better for this full moon this weekend, too. It is shaping True. up to be perfect. And by the way, I can't wait to watch tonight. It looks awesome. Uh, we're going to see clear skies all weekend. Uh, comfortable conditions. Halloween looks great. Let's take a look at the time lapse this morning. Sunrise was gorgeous. Uh, beautiful colors there, and uh, we're still seeing clear skies. Temperatures are on their way up. We're at 51 right now. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Some very dry air, so that'll give you your big swings in temperature. We should be in the 70s by the time the day is over with. Friday night football is going on tonight. That looks good, too. A kickoff will be at about 63. Halftime, 57. Sunset is at 649. Uh, looking good all the way around. 47 degrees right now in Comfort, 52 Canyon Lake, 53 New Braunfels, 55 down there in Pleasanton. Still reporting 46 in Hondo, but it'll warm up uh, pretty quickly there as well. We'll see that number jump up, I think, within the hour. 52 Gonzalez, 49 Victoria, 50 right now in Catula. Two points, as I mentioned, are on the low side. And they're actually going to go lower as we get into Sunday and Monday. Another little shot of drier air works its way in, and so that keeps things on the dry side. You can see that here at the dew point tracker. We'll jump up a little bit on Sunday, but not enough to where you would notice it. And then it comes back down with a weak frontal battery. 
Then we'll start to see the dew point jump up a little bit back into next week, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll see those dew points probably jump up close to 60, and that may lead to some morning clouds late next week. But still, there's no rain anywhere in the forecast, which isn't great news considering we really do need it. Water vapor shows that we've got some high clouds coming in from the Pacific, but that is about it. There is no rain with this either. And in fact, the weather pattern across the country is very, very quiet. If you remember, we had that upper level low moving across the country. Well, it has moved all the way up into New England now, taking some of the moisture with Zeta with it. And there is some pretty heavy snow and some rain right along the coast. But once that moves out, you're talking about a really quiet weather pattern for the entire country. Halloween looks good for everybody. Uh, there is a little bit of tropical weather we got to get to down in the Caribbean. This system here, Hurricane Center, thinks this has about an 80% chance of developing. It's going to move towards Central America. Won't have any impact on us, but it's significant because if we get a named storm, this is going to tie the record for most named storms in a season with 2005. And if you remember, 2005 was a wild year. That was Katrina. So uh, we know that uh, this has been a very busy year. It looks like it's still uh, continuing to do so. Uh, looking at the trick or treat forecast, uh, it looks good, as I mentioned, 75, 5 o'clock, 69 by 7 o'clock, 63 by 9 o'clock. You probably won't need a jacket with those costumes, maybe not until late, maybe after 8 o'clock. It gets a little chilly out there. Forecast for today, 64 noontime, 69 by 2 o'clock. We're up around 72 for a high. Sunny skies, light and variable winds, the extended forecast. We'll go 77 tomorrow. Don't forget we fall back into Sunday morning, 76, 71 Monday, 73 for Election Day. And just a few more clouds by the middle part of next week with partly cloudy skies. We'll be right back. Check and see how the Dow is looking right now as we approach the top of the hour. Now down over 400 points, 26,247. Look for more on the market in our later newscasts. Good morning. Hello there. Coming up on live, it's our big Halloween show. We've got celebrity surprises and over 40 costumes all happening on live. Spooky. Ryan's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. <laughs> on keysat.com, we have 12 last-minute costume ideas, and you might mm. be able to put some of these together with stuff you have around the house. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, some of them right there. Uh, of course, a popular one, a Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Of course, a lot of people dressing up their daughters like that. I tried that, but it didn't work. Not to be confused with Mr. Joe Exotic. Uh, some of you may have that stuff around your house. God bless you if you do. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Oster, I've heard Mike Osterhage is going as Joe Exotic this year. And speaking of Joe Exotic, there you see Carol Baskin. A lot of mm -hmm. people say it's a pretty easy costume to pull off. All you need is something, anything tiger print or cheetah print. You can also go as Dr. Anthony Fauci or Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as you said. Yep. Um, maybe a U.S. mail carrier. That's some of the easy ones. Some of the on here is are weird though. Like a zoom, you go as a Zoom call. Yeah, well, I mean, but it's appropriate for 2020. So a piece of cardboard cut with a hole in the middle to look like a screen. There's different ways that we can do that one. Mm -hmm. And then a really weird, go as in Dell on SNL. Yeah, I don't think How people. How am I going to lose mean? 50 pounds and put on a wig in in, in one day? <laughs> 